Welcome. So for today's lesson, we're going to do something I'm pretty excited about. We're going to start working with 3D modeling. Now, this is particularly cool because the 3D models you create in AutoCAD, you can convert into a 3D printable file and print it. Uh, you can take that CAD part that you make and go from that to a 3D printed piece with pretty, with not too many steps. It depends on the printer. You got to set it up properly, yada, yada, yada. But essentially, whenever we uh, see a 3D printed part, it starts out as a CAD file made in a CAD software like AutoCAD. Sometimes AutoCAD, sometimes Inventor, sometimes SolidWorks, sometimes Onshape, sometimes Union 360. You can use any of these and it'll work. Uh, so today I'm going to show you how to make that 3D model. Let's get started by creating a cube. So I will create a rectangle. I'll start at 0, 0, and then I'll go to 5, 5. Now here we have a 2D sketch. Now much like we went, we did in a freehand sketches, we're going to go from a 2D sketch to a 3D model by extruding. Now if you look up here in our ribbon, all of our options are 2D related. Construction lines, circles, all these things are 2D related, but we want some 3D tools. Here's how we access those 3D tools. Now you can always, you know, obviously just type in the command if you know the name of it. Uh, but if you go down here to this gear looking thing uh, and you click that, you'll see there are a bunch of options. Now, if you're using uh, some other type of uh, AutoCAD, you know, for Mac, this might look a little bit different, but you should see one that says 3D Basics. Uh, and that will shift your ribbon to basic 3D modeling tools. Uh, and one of them should look very familiar extrude, which creates a 3D solid or surface by extruding a 2D or 3D curve. That should sound familiar, right? We would, when we did freehand sketches, we took 2D sh uh, shapes and we turned them into 3D models. Uh, same thing we're going to do here. There are some other 3D modeling tools like Revolve, Lock, Sweep, etc. that we're going to learn about in the future. Uh, but extrude does the very basic one that we learned about where it's just, you know, you take a 2D sketch and you extrude it at 90 degrees perpendicular to your eye to create a 3D model. So let's use that. We're going to select extrude. What we're going to do is we're going to select our object, hit enter, and then type in how tall we want our cube to be. So I made it five by five. Let's make it five by five by five. So it's a cube, right? So I'll type in five and hit enter. Uh, and it should have made our cube. The problem is right now we have uh, just our X, Y, and we want to be able to see our Z. There's a couple of ways you can go about this. The first one, the one I like to use and I recommend you use, is you do what you normally do for panning around the screen. If you recall, that's holding down on the scroll wheel on your mouse and then moving your mouse around, except you're also going to add in a hold down of the shift key. So it's hold down, click on the scroll wheel and move your mouse and you'll be able to pivot around the screen and you'll see the Z axis. You'll see your model. Another way to navigate the screen is this cube in the corner. We call this the view cube. Now the view cube allows you to pop between views, whatever view that might be. You can go and click on corners to see you know, angled views. You can also click down, hold down on your mouse and pivot that way. Um, so what I like to do, what I generally do, is if I want to snap to a view, I'll use my view cube. But if I want to actually just zoom around a little bit, hold the shift key, click down on the control wheel and use my mouse. Uh, I recommend you do it this way. You know, you get used to using your mouse to zoom around. It's so much faster to work. Um, and it'll just save you tons of times and heartache. Heartache. <laughs> it'll save you lots of time in the future. Uh, but if you're just jumping between views, click on the view that you want to jump to, because even if, you know, let's say I'm here and I want to move my mouse back, I'm not going to get it perfectly to be the top view, no matter how hard I try, just using my mouse. Actually, I'm going to need to click on the view cube to get it to snap to the right place. There are a couple of other ways to pivot around the screen, but these are the two main ones you need to know. Um, and using those two, you should be able to do anything you really need to. Okay, we have our 3D model now of a cube, but the issue is, it doesn't really look like a cube, it looks like a wiry thing. Uh, and that can be a little confusing because uh, if you make errors with extrusions, it's going to make it really hard to catch those. So we want to change our visual style is what it's called in this. We want to change our representation of our models. Here's how we do it. If you go over here with your mouse where it says 2D wireframe, it'll 
If you hover, it says visual style controls. This will allow you to change the representation of your cube. I want you to go through and try to, you know, click on all of these and see what it looks like. Um, I generally only use a couple of these. I'll use realistic a lot of the time. Um, I won't really use any of the other ones other than sometimes I'll use shade or shaded with edges depending on the shape. Sometimes it looks better, uh, but I'll generally stick to realistic. The one I do like to use a lot uh, when I have intrusions, especially, is uh, X-ray because it'll allow the intrusions to really appear and you can tell where they are and you can see exactly what's going on. So I really like to know exactly what's going on with my shape. If you're drawing a 2D sketch, though, you want to pop back in a 2D wireframe because that'll make it really clear. Uh, but let's hop into realistic for a moment. Okay, here we have our cube, five by five by five. I'm gonna go back for a moment. Uh, I'm gonna go back. Uh, actually, let me go forward. Uh, so I have my cube, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap back to my top view, and I'm going to delete this cube. And I'm gonna redraw it. This time, I'm going to draw it using, instead of the rectangle tool, line. Now, I can still access line and construction lines and all the tools I could before when I was in my mechanical ribbon. Um, I just need to type them in. They won't be in my ribbon. But let's say I wanted to see them. I'll hop back into mechanical. I'm going to draw a 2D sketch of my cube again, one of the faces of my cubes, anyway. Uh, and I'll this time just use line. So I'll start at zero, zero. I'll go up five units. Ooh, something weird happened. Didn't draw the line. Start at zero, zero. Go up five units. Go to the side, five units. And we can start to notice that this looks a little weird. Uh, and the reason this looks weird is because our visual style is realistic, which is really for 3D modeling. If you pop back in the 2D wireframe, things will look right. So don't panic if things start to look weird. They look weird because you're in a different visual style. I'll pop back to 2D wireframe so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, so I've drawn my four lines and I'm gonna try to use extrude again. Um, I'll go back to 3D basics and you know it'll keep the rectangle I've drawn. And if I try to extrude this, I'm going to run into a problem. Um, I can't, I'm not just selecting all four lines all at once because they're separate objects. Okay, let's say I go through and I select all four. And I hit enter. I type in five inches and hit enter. I rotate. Okay, this looks a little bit different, but it looks like I still have a cube. Let's go into realistic and see what we actually have. Oh, look, it appears, you know, it might, you might not see it if you're in a, a weird perspective, but you actually get a hollowed out shape. Uh, we've, what we've created here is these meshed walls. They're called, well, we're going to revisit that on a different day, but we've, we haven't created what we want. And the reason this happens is because our four lines are separate objects. And to extrude properly, everything needs to be part of the same object. So let's go back to before we extrude it. So if we want to extrude this, we need to make sure that all four of these lines are part of the same object. There's a couple of ways you can do this. The first one I'm gonna mention to you is something called join. And what join does is it'll take several objects and it'll combine them to be one. So I'll select join and I'll just select all four lines and hit enter. And it will make this all one object. So it's kind of like it's a rectangle. Now, of course I could have drawn a rectangle, but I'm just trying to, you know, I'm applying this to more things. Right now I have uh, just a rectangle, so you can draw with a rectangle, but you usually won't have that. You're going to need to do something like join to make it one object. Now I can hit extrude, select, make sure I'm selecting the line, hit enter, and then extrude it up five inches. Okay, it looks okay right now. It doesn't look like I have that meshed wall. But let's go into realistic and make sure it's really not hollow or anything. Okay, and it looks good. That looks right. Um, let's go back. And I'll show you another way that you could have done this instead of joining your four lines together. So let's delete these. 
Another option, instead of joining these, is to use something called Polyline. If you hit the drop down under Line, you can access something called Polyline. And what Polyline does is it creates an object, but as you draw each line, you know, it just works like the, just like the line tool, but as you draw your lines, it'll make it all one object. So um, in terms of drawing, it's, it's really the same thing as line, but it just conveniently makes everything one object so that you can extrude it. So start at zero, zero, go up five inches, go over five inches, go down five inches, go over five inches. Uh, and if you select it, you'll notice that the entire shape gets selected because it's all one. Um, so now I can extrude, select the object, hit enter, type in five inches, rotate this, crop into realistic, and see, okay, yeah, it looks right. It's a cube. So you can really use either of these. You can use polyline, you can use join. Um, I honestly jump back and forth a lot of the time. I'll forget to use polylines. I'll just draw regular lines and, you know, whatever. I'll just join the lines together. It makes no difference. Neither is wrong. Um, join is also useful when you're combining, you know, circles with, you know, other, like you're combining other shapes together and you want to extrude them or you like, you drew some stuff and you trimmed it. Uh, that's a situation where you might want to use a uh, join. Okay. So now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this one last time. I'm going to hop back into 2D wireframe and I'm going to go into our regular mechanical a ribbon. I'm going to go through and model uh, the 3D model. I'm going to model. I'm going to show you guys how to create the 3D model of block number nine, uh, and then I'm going to ask you guys to create a 3D model of blocks number two and ten, which are very similar. Now, this thing is pretty simple when you think about it. All we would do if we were drawing this uh, by hand is we would, you know, we would draw. Well, actually, we would draw the whole cube and we would cut away a part, right? But what you could do is you could draw the 2D sketch of the front view and extrude it by the depth. And that's what I'm going to do here. The issue is, if you look, we're currently drawing on the top view. Uh, so if we draw the front view in, it's going to, well, it's going to be in the wrong place. So I'm going to put it in the wrong place for now. And I'm going to show you guys how to reorient it once we're done uh, to... We'll put it in the right place. So the front view is where the front view should be. Top is where the top should be. Right side is where the right side should be. Um, but, you know, if you think about this, I'm just doing a 2D sketch of the front view, and I'm extruding it by the depth, which in this case is four units or one inch. Uh, and it'll, you know, it'll be the, the correct model. So let me draw some lines. Uh, I guess I... Could use polyline too but i'll use line and i'll join things together so we can get some practice in with that so i'll start at the origin and i'll go up by the height which if i count here is one two three four five six units so that's i'm going to treat each unit as a quarter of an inch like we would if we were sketching uh, so six units becomes one and a half inches okay i'm gonna hit escape then i'm gonna draw a line at the bottom again starting at I'll just type it in zero zero and the length of that line is uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine units so that's 2.25 inches because you know again each unit's a quarter of an inch uh, and then this bottom part here is uh two units so that's half an inch and then this top part here let me recount that one two three four five one two three four five five units uh which is 1.25 inches 1.25 and then I'll connect. Oh, try that again. Escape. Now, if I try to extrude this, if I type in extrude, um, I'm gonna have a problem because these are all separate objects. So what I need to do is I need to join all of these. So I'll select everything and hit enter. You can also, you know, click them one at a time to join them. Uh, and then, you know, if you click, you see, or hover over, you see that it's all one object now. And I can extrude the entire thing, if it'll let me click without freezing, uh, and hit enter, and then type in how far I want to extrude this. I want to extrude this by the depth, which is one, two, three, four units. So that's going to be one inch. Uh, and if I rotate, 
I see that. Okay, looks like I have a 3D model. Let's hop into realistic. And we see, okay. All right, it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. The only issue is uh, it's oriented incorrectly. So let's, let's remedy that. So if we think about this, this should be our front view here. This should be our top view. And this should be our right side view. So this whole thing kind of needs to do a 90 degree rotation in this direction. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select, we're gonna use a command called, you guessed it, rotate. Um, and we've used rotate for um, 2D shapes before, but this time we wanna rotate in three dimensions. So we'll do rotate 3D. And we'll select the object we wanna rotate and hit enter. And then it's gonna ask us, ask us for an axis rotation. Um, we want to rotate about, well, the x-axis, right? Because we want to flip it in that direction. We still want to keep everything on the origin. So I'm going to select the origin and just another point on the x-axis along this object. And then it's going to ask us, what is your rotation angle? Um, my rotation angle, I want to be 90 degrees. So I'll just type in 90 and I'll hit enter. And there we go. Front view where our front view should be. Our top where our top should be, our right side where our right side should be. Um, what you can do is you can hop into uh, shades with edges. It might look a little bit better. Uh, it really depends on the shape. Uh, there is no like right or wrong visual representation unless I, you know, tell you use this visual representation for this. Uh, whichever one you think looks best, try to stick to the ones that make it, you know, look like an object. Don't use, you know, 2D wireframe or sketchy for 3D objects because it just doesn't look quite right. Um, you know, conceptual is not a bad one. Uh, there is no right or wrong. Your, your teacher, if you don't have me, might have a specific preference. If you want a default one to use, you can use uh, conceptual for this, okay? Um, so that's it for today's lesson. Uh, I'll see you guys on Wednesday for intrusions.